Good morning, everyone. My name is Mighty Stream. I'm going to do your August the 23rd Spiritual Principle Day in a Meditation. I am so excited to be able to actually upload on the ship. I have struggled for, this is my third day. I have struggled for three days in order to be able to upload the meditation. So hopefully you found the older meditations for the same date. Uh, same topic from the ones I did last year. That's the whole purpose is that this would be accessible to you. Okay. The title of the spiritual principle of day for August 23rd, striving for emotional maturity. Emotional maturity is our reward for letting go of anger and resentment. That comes from the Living Clean book, chapter seven, principles, practice, and perspective. Perhaps we've all encountered circumstances when another member gets on our last nerve. When that happens, sometimes it takes everything in us not to attack them, mock them, shut them down using whatever tactic we can. We may want to bolt from the room because we see how this person, who may or may not have wronged us in some way, enjoys the respect of other members in the group. We want to expose them as a fraud and a hypocrite, but we don't. We say nothing because we know our personal feelings about another member should play no role in how, for instance, our area contributes to regions, fellowship development efforts, to the regions, fellowship development efforts. At other business meetings, we'll have no problem keeping our mouths shut because we'd much rather roll our eyes and smugly watch the same two members battle it out like they always do over the finer points of co coordinating an effective public relations campaign. In those situations, we have to stop ourselves from sharing the eye roll with everyone else in the room revealing our displeasure with the proceedings. We love to break our silence by audibly groaning at how much time they are taking up. A member shared, the second I start thinking about how I'm the only adult in the room, I know I'm not coming from a place of emotional maturity. With some practice, we can learn to check ourselves in situations where previously the monster that lives in our head would have burst out in full force in an effort to kill the proceedings. Similarly, we find a way to restrain our inner adolescent who would snark, scoff, and snipe at members merely for being themselves. Emotional maturity may not sound like a big enough reward to, for not acting out on our character defects, but doesn't it make our lives so much more manageable and peaceful? And isn't that a big part of why we came here in the first place? I will practice reining in my reactiveness in situations where my personal feelings about other members serve no relevant purpose. Today, emotional maturity is a reasonable reward for those efforts. What a beautiful meditation. Let's take a moment of silence followed by the we version of serenity prayer. Moment of silence now, please. Thank you. God, grant us the serenity to accept the things that we cannot change, the courage to change the things that we can and the wisdom to know the difference just for today. Please and thank you. Striving for emotional maturity. It sounds as difficult as it can actually be. Striving for emotional maturity. It's a work in progress. And all of us can relate to the example of sitting in a meeting and knowing goodness well that the person that everyone is loving up on, giving them hugs and all of this receptiveness, and we know for a fact that they're a liar, a cheat, they, 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 whatever you can fill in the blanks with. And yet still, 
instead of saying, hey, stop, stop the madness. Everyone slow down here. I want to expose this person as being a cheat, a lie. Instead of doing all of that, we let everyone enjoy them. And although we might have some unforgiveness still in our hearts about whatever we went through with them, we don't expose them. We don't put them on front street. We don't tell everyone about all the dirt they said about everybody else that is hugging them <laughs> to us. We don't do that because we have matured emotionally. Same thing goes for in a business meeting. There's always those one or two people that want to emphasize the finer details and they come to the business meeting with the intent to be a problem for the chair of chairs or a problem for the treasurer. They come with the intent. And month after month, we endure this mess. Right? And the few times that they came with the intent and they actually won the debate and it actually was the right thing to do, pales in comparison to all of the other months we've had to put up with their mess, right? But because in the spirit of goodwill, we understand that we are spiritually maturing today, emotionally, mentally, right? We don't have to buy into that, nor do we have to let everyone know we have a problem with those people. I'm pretty sure someone else will let everyone know they also have a problem with them, right? But for me to go into a meeting and I'm ro rolling my eyes and snapping my fingers and sighing and twisting my neck at every comment they make shows that I'm emotionally immature and I have some work to do. And I wish I could tell you Mighty Stream has it nailed down. This sister does not because the minute I decide to do otherwise and to act out, it never is a good thing. And everyone always knows when I have a problem with someone, right? That is why I practice these spiritual principles in all my affairs. I do my best to make sure in those atmospheres where I know I'm going to be challenged to apply spiritual principles, I make sure that I'm prayed up. I check my motives. I even might make a decision you're going to listen unless it's super detrimental to our NA group. You're going to listen and you're going to vote what you think the group would want you to vote, right? If it's something that's been taken back to the group, you will vote according to the group's vote. But who has time to be doing service work and living life and raising a family and going to school and who has time to do all that and volunteer a few hours a month to do service work only to debate at every area of need? I don't have the time nor the energy. And most likely you're just like me, right? And so we grow up. We pick and choose our battles carefully. And some of them just are a waste of time, energy, and emotion. You don't have to do that today. And probably the people... Seems like they just live to debate, right? The people that show up and do that, they're probably really not okay with themselves. And they're probably some of the addicts that are still suffering. When we take that moment of silence, we can think about them because they clearly don't have much peace. Because if they did, they wouldn't continue to present themselves the way that they do. So I want to go back over this last paragraph. It says, emotional maturity may not sound like a big enough reward for not acting out on our character defects, but it doesn't, but doesn't it make our lives so much more manageable and peaceful? And isn't that a big part of why we came here in the first place? Boom, bada bang. That's it in a nutshell. It may not seem like a large harvest, a large reward. But look at your peace. Do a peace check, right? Look at your manageability, which if you if you think about it, the first step was we were able to admit that our lives had become unmanageable. Do you think I'm going to stay here all of this time to allow my life to become unmanageable again? 
dealing with other people that I can't control anyway, it's not going to happen. So today I want you to make up your mind that you are going to rein, rein in your reactiveness in situations where your personal feelings about other members serve no relevant purpose. That's like a dagger to the heart. What do you mean my personal feelings serve no relevant purpose? Yeah, at the end of the day, how you feel about the chair, the chair of chairs, the GSR, the treasure, how you personally feel about them has absolutely nothing to do with how the group operates. And if you're using your influence to influence other people, like sway them towards how you feel about this person doing that particular um, service, you're misusing your power, right? You're misusing your influence. And I hope that's not you. Because we're different people today. At least I know I am. Listen, I've enjoyed talking to you. My name is Mighty Stream, and I intend to talk to you tomorrow if all goes well. I hope that you will have a beautiful August 23rd on purpose. I intend to talk to you soon.